<laughs> right, who wants to call? Yes, you at the back. I am, I'm working tomorrow um, through the day. I have to be up at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning, which is too fun. Um, I'm, I'm on Blue Peter in the morning. I think it's live at 9 o'clock if you want to tune in. Um, and then I'm going home. I'm having a huge party with all my friends and family at my house. And then we're hitting the town. Which I'm a little bit nervous about. But um, yeah, we've got a, a venue in Newcastle that's going to look after and throw us a bit of a bash. So I'm looking forward to it. about this but um when I first won I remember the th th I remember the first week um of winning and we went on this huge promo trail and all through the week like I had this knot in my stomach because it just felt so weird that like so many people were like interested in everything that was going on and um, there was paparazzi chasing the car and and I was just like the whole week I just kept thinking what on earth has happened to me life um, and then I went home and it settled down a bit um, and I chilled out with all my friends and family. Then I went straight into work, working on the album. And it wasn't until, um, I think, the start of the, I would say the start of the classic promo, I was a bit like, right, I get this now. I get how it all works. Um, and I kind of I kind of came into my own with it a bit, and I just started to kind of, before I would always worry about what people would think and what would happen if this this happened and that happened, and, and I kind of thought, do you know what it is? I got dropped by my first record label, I came through that, I got through that bit, I went on the show, I had all the press about the sexuality thing, all of that kind of stuff. I thought, what is the worst that can happen? Do you know, like, just enjoy it for what it is and start to kind of take it for what it is. And I kind of went into the classic album with that attitude. Um, and I've had a blast ever since, so it seems to be working. <laughs> Try not to worry about things. You know, people. It's, it's a lot easier for people to say something nasty than to say something nice. You know, every, I'm sure everybody does it. You read a magazine, you go, oh God, look at this, and like gossipy, and it's just what happens. You know, everybody does it, and I put myself here, so I kind of just shut myself off from all of that, and kind of just, you know, as long as as long as I do a good job in my job, and I'm at the best I can be, that's all I really care about. And. Yeah. Somebody has told me that before, that I do look like no, George Michael. Don't say that, he's on the front, that's obviously a no goal. <laughs> um, yeah, I have had that a few times, a few people have said that, yes. Actually, I think you look like a young Elvis. Elvis? Yeah. <laughs> if I can have his success, I'll be happy. <laughs> yes? So, would you like to be in the West End and what part would you like to be? Um, it is something I would like to try. Um, the, the problem with the West End is, it, it, it's great, it's an amazing experience. You get to be on stage every night, but the, also, the other thing about it is it's so tiring because you can't go anywhere. And I kind of like to be on the go all the time, so I'd be a bit like a caged animal, even though I'd be on stage every night. Um, I've been offered a few roles in the past that I haven't been able to take due to timings of things and things like that. But um, a role at the minute, if I was to go into any show, um, probably Ghost. Goes to the music oh. I like <laughs> Yes, little girl in the corner. I am, yes. I mean, I'm oh, friend, a friendly with people in X Factor, that was the question. Um, I am, yes. It's hard for us to see each other, but um, there's only a few, um, there's only a rare amount of people that get to go through that experience, and nobody can kind of imagine how crazy it is. So you kind of have a bond with everybody that's been a part of that show because you know what? what they've gone through. So yeah, I, I do still try and keep in touch with Stacey and Ollie and Jedward, of course. Um, yeah, I do. Always try and catch up when we can. Yes? Um, how do you um, cope with the public coming up to you all the time and kissing you? Kissing us? 
Do you know what it is? I've never ever minded it. I think, I feel like people... <laughs> I think I should wear a mask when I go out. <laughs> Um, no, I, I don't mind meeting people and talking to people and things. Um, sometimes, you know, people can be not rude, um, just kind of like really invade you, and it's like, what? You know, like yeah. never met you before in my life, and it's quite a sca it's quite scary because they really feel like they annoy you because they've seen you on TV, and you're like, you could literally just kill me right now. You know? <laughs> but um, I understand, you know, that I I've done that in the past. I've seen people, I've watched people on TV, and you do have a connection with them. You feel like you know them. Um, and I enjoy nothing more than meeting people, hearing their stories about where they watched the X Factor or if they've heard the album and mm. things like that. Because you know, that's it's my that's my job to give back to the people that you know support me through my music. So it's kind of just I enjoy it, and I'm just thankful for the support. I'd be I'd be more worried if I was walking down the street and people were hurling abuse at us. <laughs> I'm just thankful that doesn't happen. Look, <laughs> teacher, the back. Say that again. Going up against Olly Murs. Um, <laughs> no, um, it was you know when you're in a show like that, um, everybody has different strengths and different performances, different songs, and we we are so shut. We were so sheltered from the press and everything. So I think the week that I won. I, like the odds had shot up that I was the favourite, and generally on the TV shows, the favourite in the last week tends to win. But everybody was telling me all of this, but I kind of was totally kept away from it. I was rehearsing, and I kind of honestly thought he was going to win, because you, you never go on to something like that and think, right, I'm going to win it. Um, but no, the opposite happened. So I was just kind of like, wow, you know. Um, but he's doing well as well, and it's amazing to see each other's journeys. You know, it's good. Yes. I feel like I'm having an interview with a son. Yeah. Um, there wasn't there wasn't an awkwardness at all. Um, we got on really well. We were actually really friendly in the show. Um, I actually haven't seen him for a long time. The last time I seen him was before Christmas. But whenever we see each other now, it's just like we've always we've always known each other. Yeah. So it wasn't really that awkward. I think you know we're both we're both stood behind the doors when the final was going on. I was hyperventilating on Cheryl's shoulder, um, and we both kind of just said to each other. You know, whatever happens, you know, we've had the platform, we've had this thing that's gonna, you know, hopefully help with in our careers, and that's what it kind of has done anyway, so mm. it was all good. Mm. Yes. You, 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 yeah, you. <laughs> I was at college doing performing arts, um, bits and we had a theatre like this at my college, um, and we used to do shows and things like that, and I was in the second year, so I would have been due to leave in the, the, the well, it was actually the year after, but I had another year. And I probably would have ended up coming to a school, theatre school in London, or training to be like a, a performing arts teacher or something, or just trying to do stuff. But I did always want to be a paramedic as well, so I probably, if nothing had happened music-wise, I would have went and been a paramedic. Not bright enough to be a doctor. Um, <laughs> yes. To the voice. It, uh, do you mean to audition or to just sing on the show? <laughs> sing on it. Um, yeah, I mean, I kind of feel like it got really badly slated in the press and I really enjoyed it. Um, I don't know about anybody else. Yeah. But um, it was great and I think they were allowed a lot more artistic control. I don't know whether that was where maybe the public didn't get it um, because it wasn't so kind of polished and slick and <coughs> the product was there. I don't know how, how that works. but. I would have performed on it. It was it was a good show and the set looked really cool. Asked? So, hmm? Would you ask? I wasn't asked. No, um, because the way it all works with TV shows, I'm going to get boring on you now. You can't really go on a TV show unless you've got an album out. But they won't have you on unless the album's ready to be out the next week. So, if I hadn't had an album out, maybe it's because it was run by Universal, so I probably would have gone. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Favourite singer is um, Beyonce. She's my idol. Yes. Yeah? Yeah. 
I'll tell you the story about how me and Jamie met each other. Um, years, about two, two years before X Factor. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Two years before X Factor, I took part in like a regional competition called Music Means Life. And um, Jamie was, was a performer on the, he wasn't in, in the competition, he was one of the guest artists to perform on the show. And I met him then and we had a good chat. And I remember, I used to always go and listen to his music, I really enjoyed his music. Um, and then I went and did X Factor, and it wasn't until, fe was it February this year? Uh, yeah. yeah, February we did this show called Sunday for Sammy in the North East, which was a big charity event again. And Jamie was one of the MDs on the show. And we got talking, um, we went to an after party, and <laughs> I got very, very drunk. And <laughs> we ended up busking in the hotel lobby for all the people at the after party. And apparently, I can't remember this, but apparently I started to play the climb five times in a row. <laughs> we played it five times in a row, because I kept going, play the climb, it's like, we'll play that one. Play the climb. Um, but we, we did it, and then basically my manager, Angie, kind of set us to up, and we went into the studio. Um, it was really, it was just a chilled out day to try something. I took some lyrics in that I had worked on, and then we came up with a song, and here we are today, it's on the album. So that was how we met each other. Yeah, it's you. When you look in the mirror, do you still see the same person you saw before you started the experiment? Um, no. <laughs> no, I don't. Um, I still see myself as just Joe and nothing else. Um, but I think I've learned a lot in the past two years. Um, I had to grow up very, very quickly on that show. I went. I was the first time being away from home. I kind of had, you know, my me, me mum was on the end of the phone. But when you don't have that, that physical kind of support there that's just there to look after you. You've got to get a bit tough. Um, and I grew up really fast in, in the space of like three months. Um, and then with the first album, I kind of, you know, I experienced the whole kind of thing with Psycho and leaving them and part them. And I started to get a bit more gutsy about things. And I would say I'm just kind of a, a stronger version of what I was before I went on the show. Um, and I'm not as scared to take on a challenge now. Desert, I desert. What's desert? Should I know what that is? <laughs> yeah, is it like what, what three songs would I have to play on a, on a, a desert island? <laughs> you what? Radio 4 and all great people go on that program, so you're bound for you eventually. <laughs> and what would I sing on it? No, what you would take with you, your favourite track. Right, okay. <laughs> I don't listen to the radio a lot, but I do love BBC Radio 4. And the Bible, and complete works of Shakespeare as well. Right. What songs would I take on with this? Um, I think I'd like to take a bit of a modern twist. Would they have Crazy in Love on Beyonce? <laughs> um, maybe he's, uh, maybe he's a Lady Anna track. I don't think they get enough, enough recognition in, in the UK and I think they're incredible. They write amazing lyrics. Um, definitely a Beyonce song. And are you allowed to take one of your own songs? I'll take one of my own songs. Maybe it's off the new album. Uh, yes. yes. Um, we'll have a tour planned. You what? <laughs> um, we're planning a tour at the minute. Um, but I really enjoy these kind of things. You know, a lot of these things happen with... Um, you do a lot of these kind of things with radio stations and it goes live on the radio. So I'm sure when the new album's out, we'll probably do a few of these. I did one in Newcastle for Smooth Radio and that was quite cool. But um, yeah, I, I really enjoy them. I get really nervous for them though, because I, I kind of feel like I'm stripped. Um, there's, there's no, there's no, there's no makeup on the track. There's no um, back and vocals and orchestra or anything like that. So stop being rude. One more, okay? Yes.
you know, it's it's great. There's nothing. I love, 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 love traveling all over the country, going to see everybody, um, and and being being everywhere. But there's also nothing better as well than going home as well and, and doing work there. Um, and that, you know, I, I try and still live there as much as possible. It's not always possible. I do get there quite bad. I have been getting there quite a lot at the minute with us being recording, but come September time I'll probably be living out of a suitcase for a long time. <laughs> but um, yeah, I, I love where I come from, so don't worry, I won't forget it. <laughs> okay, now this next song, 